Well, I'm preparing for the big move and I've got a whole lot of stuff packed in boxes already. The rest of the workshop is in chaos and there's a whole lot of stuff that I said that I'm not going to take with me just because it's going to cost too much to move and it doesn't make sense to have that many duplicates. So in this video, I'm going to film all the items that I no longer need. And if you want one of those items, email me which item and how much you'd like to pay for it. And then by Saturday, I will email you whether or not you have it. And pickup time will be Saturday near Elmont, Ontario. I will not be shipping any items. This is my 14 inch bandsaw. It comes with a stand. It is not my favorite bandsaw because it's smaller than the other ones. Uh, and flaws, I should point out, this one piece adjust and tilt can be annoying in terms of letting up on the tilt because sometimes I have to loosen up the tension for that to tilt forward. And the other thing that is not ideal about this one is it's kind of tricky to get at the bottom blade guides. And the narrow wheels can make it a bit tricky to change blades, although once they're on, it's okay. Next item is this metal dry cut chop saw. I buggered up the blade on it, but I have two spare blades with it. It's really heavy. I don't think I have a good place for it. Homemade table saw version two. This is the uh, non-tilting version, but uh, I find this one is actually much easier to adjust than version one was because it's got this lever here. I actually make plunge cuts with it sometimes. Next is my horizontal boring machine. I actually quite like this machine, but it's very heavy, so it would cost a lot to move. And I've used it very rarely, partially because if I use it in a video, it's not something that's available to other people because this sort of sliding table, I paid quite a bit for that used. Um, that really enables it. Uh, this is actually a much sturdier table than you would find on a commercial uh, horizontal boring machine or a slot mortiser. Problems with this one is the way this bearing and this coupling kind of extend the shaft for a pulley. It works, I'm, but I'm always kind of surprised that it does work, that this doesn't come apart. So I've used the machine without trouble, but that might be a bit of a sneaky problem there. I have, of course, extensively written about this machine on my website if you want more detail. Uh, here is the uh, Pantarouter XL. Um, it includes the router. The router actually has a broken on off switch, but that's okay because you need a separate switch for that anyways. This one has more range of motion than my other Panther routers, but uh, it is not as stiff as a regular Panther router because the links are a little bit longer. But it is a Panther router, it is calibrated. Then up here I've got an older model Panther router. This is the one with the uh, plexiglass template holder. It works just fine. I've just been using newer models of panther router. It doesn't come with a router. And right under the panther router is my Marble Machine 3. That's the modular one. That's basically a set of blocks where you can build the tracks. It's all in the box. I can't get it down right now. Marble Machine 2. This has been viewed, I think, about 6 million times on YouTube. A old style chop saw. It's quite heavy, made out of cast iron. 10 inch blade. A 12 inch Mastercraft planer, plus the stand that comes with it, which I still have. Not including this wooden stand. This uh, green gas powered weed whacker. Uh, unfortunately, we broke the starter cord on it, uh, but it was run just recently. Now let's go in the uh, storage shed. I've got some uh, 70 liter plastic tubs here with a lid that seals in place with a ring on here. My air raid siren. If you want this one, you have to pay for the motor. That's a very nice motor. A uh, one of those pancake air compressors. A basic router dovetail jig. I used that once. 
a really crappy little table saw. The one thing that's good about it is this is an induction motor. This is the kind of motor that I used in my homemade dust collector. Base for a pantorotor, minus table and pantograph. Maybe you want some of those aluminum extrusions. They kind of fit together quite neatly so you can build other stuff out of that. A Wagner electric spray gun. Uh, a couple of gas powered chainsaws. Uh, this one runs, this one used to run and then it stopped running. An early tangent of mine, this one is actually screw advance. Uh, this screw, every turn of this screw advances it by 0.1 inches. So I used to uh, cut tenons with that one. This is going way back, more than 10 years. Various motors, fractional horsepower, I need to part with some of those, but uh, not all of them. Then there's this bar fridge. I think it's about two cubic feet. It is missing the shelf in here, but it does work. Now we're in the house basement, which is also pretty chaotic at the moment. Items in here, a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum analyzer. I've had this for many years. It was given to me orphaned from some other project. In the time I've had it, about uh, 13 years or so, I have not turned it on until now. So don't need to keep that one. It's quite heavy. A metal panther rotor. This is almost the latest version. There's only a slight change to the castings that was done since that one. My original quick set tenon jig. This one is gray. I've rebuilt it to make videos about how to build one since then. So I've got a green one. I really don't need two of these. A six by 48 inch belt sander. This was originally a shopsmith accessory, but uh, put onto its own stand. Uh, I'll include this dust collection thingy, but not the dust collector. Stand of course is included and the motor. My great big heavy lathe. Unfortunately, I can't even lift the pieces to set it up right now. It is extremely solid. I'll uh, put in a picture of what it looks like when it's together. The stand is included. It's uh, quite sturdy, but the drawers are not included. My very first homemade bandsaw. This is an 18 inch bandsaw. The blade guides are not as adjustable as it is on newer ones. But I actually quite like using this saw. It's just I'm only going to take along two bandsaws because two bandsaws is sufficient for one workshop. It's got a one and a half horsepower sealed motor in it. It does run on 240 volts though. My six inch jointer. This was my first jointer. I never used a guard on it, but surprisingly I still found it. And here's my very first screw advanced box joint jig. It actually runs quite nice. Comes with just a 48 tooth gear. Um, it's not actually presently set up to work with this table saw. It, the bar needs to be moved so that the slot lines up with the saw blade. A shop vac air cleaner. A shop vac air cleaner. A friend gave me this. It turns out it actually needs a air cleaner filter. It's got a shop vac filter in there right now and I measured the airflow through it and it's practically zero. If you just take it away, I'd be happy. And a paper cutter. I got this when I was still into black and white photography. Works great. It's big. I just haven't used it much in recent years. So again, if you'd like any of these items, email me and how much you'd like to pay for it. That's assuming you can come and pick it up. I will not be shipping any items. Pickup is near Elmont, Ontario. That's in the Ottawa area.